It's great to be here from, from Tipperary. Uh, hopefully the technology uh, holds up for me. Uh, but um, yeah, it's a really interesting and opportune program. Um, what I want to talk about, as you were saying, Liz, my interest is in the use of games around social change, um, particularly around global development issues and engaging young people with global development issues. Um, I'm just going to share the presentation here. Um, and um, OK, hang on a sec. OK, so. Um, yeah, so it's really looking at how games can be used as a mechanism for mobilizing around social issues and for social change. Um, but I suppose the first thing that as a youth worker, my background is in community and, and youth work. As a, as a youth worker, as a community worker, um, I suppose the first thing we need to grapple with is what we mean by social change. And games are used, are used extensively uh, to change society. Um, but if we're being conscious about the type of change that we want to encourage, I suppose we need to have a sense of what our own values, our own perspectives, our own social ambitions, our own um, politics are around uh, social change. And to me, the go-to person I, 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 I look to for guidance is a, is a Brazilian philosopher and educationist called Paulo Ferreira. Many of you will be aware of his work. And one of the things he would have said very strongly, and I suppose one of his mantras would be that all education is political. Um, and I equally would say, as somebody who's coming as a researcher into the use of games, is that um, all computer games are political, um, and they are. Um, because they tell a story, they tell a, narr a narrative about society, they also present and represent people, and they encourage people to act. Um, and this sense of Freire's work being informed by games is not new. Um, I suppose one of the main proponents of Freirean methodology was uh, um, Augusto Boal, who created uh, Theatre de Prest, and many of you will be aware of his work. And again, he used um, theatre as a way of applying um, Freirean principles to encourage people to analyse their situations and to to, to mobilize for social change. But Boal himself would said he would have much preferred to use games. He himself felt that games are a much more powerful medium to mobilize for change because when you're playing a game, when you're playing a game, you're inside this magic circle, they call it. You're in this liminal space whereby you are a participant, you have agency, you can control the outcomes of the game. So games, if they were available to Gustav Boal um, at the time he was developing Theatre of the Oppressed, I imagine he would have used them much more actively than he did. And the book that he used to train uh, people in his methods was called Games for Actors and Non-Actors. Um, so games are um, seen as a powerful mechanism by which we can um, expose and analyse um, issues within our uh, our communities within our societies. Um, and this is not new to youth workers. Youth workers have been using games since youth worker work first, first, first uh, emerged. Um, we've been using games to get young people in the door, to get them socializing, get, get them engaging, to get them collaborating, to get them moving, to get them um, socializing as groups, to build teams. We've also been using games to educate, to inform, uh, to build critical and um, critical thinking and strategic thinking. Um, any of you that have played Power or Star Power, some of you may have done, will realize how powerful role play games can be in getting people to reflect on society, structures within society, and possibly the oppression that people face in their lives and um, in the lives around them. So this is not new, but um, what is new in many ways, it's its application to digital games and computer games. Um, so why, well, I mean, it's obvious, I'm sure to everybody on in the conference here, how powerful digital games have become, how quickly they've changed, how prolific they've become as part of youth culture and popular culture in contemporary global society. 
um, things have moved a long way from the Space Invaders that I would have played as a kid in an arcade to Pokemon, to Grand Theft Auto, to uh, World of Warcraft. Um, and I suppose just to, to share some of the most, the latest statistics, and this is changing very, very quickly with COVID, is the, the profile of, of uh, the spread of games is global. There's over 3 billion registered gamers globally over half of those are in the asia pacific region what's interesting for me for this optic is just more gamers in the middle east and africa than there is in europe there's more in latin america than there is in north america um so it's a global phenomenon now people play different depending on access to technology um a, a lot of um asia pacific um middle eastern and african gaming is using mobile devices rather than consoles and pcs um but even so, um, the growth of gaming as a as a as a mechanism for engagement is is universal. Um, and to demonstrate that, any of you that are involved in gaming will recognise some of the stills here from um, from Fortnite. Um, I'm not going to go into the statistics bore you because they're overwhelming. Um, there are 350 million registered players of Fortnite. There are 60 million players who play Fortnite on a regular basis. Um, there are two events I've highlighted here, but um, Travis Scott's concert and a a, a Fortnite meet meetup attracted over 12 million simultaneous players to one event now that's the population of the island of ireland scotland and wales all having the same experience at the same time it's a it's a huge it's having a huge impact on youth and popular culture and i mean i am not naive to the negative impacts but I also want to draw people's attention as youth workers to the, posi the, the, the positive side of it. I mean, how, what brought me into this, I have a, a son who was playing Minecraft one day and he shouted from his seat, he's behind you. And he, there was nobody behind him. There was nobody behind me. There was nobody behind my friend. There was a, his friend who he was playing with, but there was a zombie behind them. They turned, they dealt with the zombie and they got on with their game. And I realized that he was workshopping. He was making something with his friend. He was interacting, was communicating. And I said, as a youth worker, I need to be in that space because it is an alluring and can be a really empowering space uh, for young people, that it is a real space for them in the way that um, the street or the park or the schoolyard is a real space for them. And they can develop their identity, their social networks. They can create meaning in certain aspects of their life in that space. And the other thing that I find fantastic about games is the young people have the power in the game. My 12 year old, if she's playing Roblox, um, will beat me every time. And it gives her a real sense of joy. She is an expert that I'm not, but I bring something. So we as adults um, are not the experts. Young people are the expert. And that's a brilliant place to start when you're doing youth work. It's a brilliant place to start because they know they have the power and we're um, learning from them. So um, that's what captivates me about the use of digital games as a, mechanized, a mechanism for, for, for looking at social change. Um, and again, the, the call for the use of games um, ar around social issues is not new. There's an American um, games designer and feminist um, uh, academic called Mary Flanagan. And Mary has been talking for quite a while about using games as a mechanism for mobilizing for change. And, that, and, and she, 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 she uh, had been a game designer and gamer gate around, um, I suppose, the, the experience exposition of the misogyny that was inherent within many games that 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 that, that happened a few years ago was what really got her um, mobilizing around the need for social change within games and again as an artist she sees games as a public space uh, where she would would encourage artistic intervention around social change and 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 looking at um at social issues uh, within that public space um, so I just want to highlight three sort of, I would regard sort of fairly superficial, but enormous application or enormous, the scale, the scale of these applications is quite big in terms of how games companies are engaging with social issues. 
Um, uh, the top left hand corner there is a character from a game called Overwatch, which is um, which is uh, run by Blizzard, which has been sold. Um, if if anybody is, is tuned into it, it's been sold to Microsoft um, recently. But anyway, um, Overwatch. This character in Overwatch, Mercy, uh, you could you could purchase an in game purchase. Two weeks, two years ago, they ran a, a scheme where you could you could reskin. Um, Mercy and the money went to the Cancer Foundation of the United States. And in two weeks, gamers contributed over 12 and a half million euro to cancer research, the biggest single um, private donation ever made to cancer research in America. The lower picture there is of, um, of a, um, a game called This War of Mine. And uh, This War of Mine is an anti-war game that um, War Child, a, a charity based in Holland, um, has linked to it and and this war of mine now contributes half a million euro a year to the work of war child um, and up on the right hand side is a game where um protesters in hong kong used a gaming mechanism as a way of um encouraging people to protest and protest safely and and to mobilize around the process in hong kong over the last couple of years so games are being used to 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 address social issues um but it, it, critical games take things a step further and it's where the game is designed specifically to address an issue of concern so i've just identified three ones here the spent is a game about poverty and homelessness um and is a very powerful game and it was was written to support a charity in the united states um around homelessness but more so to raise people's awareness uh september 12th is about the war on terror and mcdonald's is about sustainable food production um very sophisticated games that tackle the complicated issues um so if as a youth worker um, you're interested in using games as a way of um, raising social issues and mobilizing around social change, uh, I'd suggest that you look at three things. The first thing is that you need to um, be comfortable in your own position. What is it you're looking to change? What is your own where, where do you stand on these issues? Whether there's, there are issues of global development, global justice, whether there are issues of development within your own communities, within your own you, you, within Scotland, but where do you stand? Um, and that's important. And the next thing I would suggest that you would do is begin a dialogue and begin a dialogue with, um, um, with organizations that are involved in games and games design that are involved in social change. I mean, organizations like Lucy's Tenderbox, you know, is a fantastic resource for people um, to gain an insight into how game design might, 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 be, might begin. Um, but I'd also suggest that in Scotland, you have a fantastically vibrant gaming industry, and it is really a huge resource that you can have in youth workers. And we have one in Ireland as well. Um, we have a, a strong games industry, and I find them very open uh, to working with youth workers uh, to develop youth worker skills, but also to look at how games might be used to create positive social change. There are organizations within the games industry, Games for Good is one, another is Games for Change, which actively promote the use of games to mobilize around positive social change. Okay, so um, what I would say then, if you are um, looking at uh, using games, I would suggest that there's three different ways you might use games and digital games, I would say in particular, one is you can use commercial off the shelf games like Minecraft or like Fortnite and FIFA, any of those games, um, and you can engage with young people and discussion with young people about behavior, about the narrative of those games, about the dynamic of those games, um, a, a, about the values embedded in those games, or you can use Minecraft as a way of constructing worlds um, we, we would have done a lot of community type building within minecraft so you can use commercial off the shelf games quite easily uh, to discuss and to um, analyze social issues the the second way of doing it is to use special purpose games like the games that i mentioned earlier that that tackle particular issues maybe homelessness maybe poverty and um, you can use those as a way of getting young people thinking and talking and discussing and analyzing those issues um, and games for change is a good source 
there are quite a few of those games out there, but you would want to become quite familiar with them yourself before playing with them with the young people, just so that you know the issues that they raise and that you feel they, it works in a, in a, in a Scottish context, because a lot of them would come from America. Um, increasingly, there's a lot about climate change. And the last thing I would suggest as a really powerful way of engaging young people with social issues is around game design. Um, and getting young people to design games that speak um, and that articulate a, a position on, on social issues or, or, or invest, uh, require them to investigate social issues. Um, so I, we would have done a lot of this type of game workshop with older children maybe than Liz, uh, Lucy might have been talking about, but um, uh, issues like um, mental health, um, around um, uh, the, so the criminal justice system. We have another one about refugees. And on the bottom left-hand corner is just a nearly process um, that young people would be involved with around designing a game about their community. Um, so we would start obviously with tabletop design processes and some of the young people really get into it and we move on to the next stage which is really creating prototypes of games and we'd work with the universities and the games design uh, colleges and they've been enormously helpful for us in bringing the game ideas that young people would have created and helping us with the artwork and engaging us with students that have skills that we, we, we maybe don't have at a level that we need. So we, we do a lot of work with, with I'm, I've actually, uh, yeah, I work in a college, so I, I have access to, 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 to game design students, which is, is really helpful. But generally speaking, colleges are open to collaborations like this. And the last phase um, of how we look at game design is looking at digital design and how you create um, um, digital games uh, for you. Not, and not all the young people will want to do digital games, but those that do, um, all of the resources that Lucy has outlined are really, really helpful and really good examples of how you can uh, take artwork or take a narrative and make it into a game. You can reskin those games as well people would refer to and there's other ones as well if people if young people are a little bit more skilled around programming you have um, Microsoft um, Arcade and and Scratch which is a game engine it's more complicated but some young people um, who are into technology are really interested in learning more about about Unity um, uh, which is is the is, is a game, pro programming language or a program platform for games um, so that's really around game design and moving into game design um, so there are lots of resources out there and there are lots of support, but I think the main message, if I, if I could, is if you're really interested in looking at games for social change, you need to develop, I suppose, clarity around what you mean and what the issues are you want to address. And the second thing is um, to, to develop alliances insofar as you can with people in industry and with people like in academia that might be able to supplement the skills and help you develop your skills. Um, so that's it. Um, I'll just finish on that. This was the last thing. If we're looking at a Mario theme, um, um, my, my daughter was quite keen that I would get Peach involved. Um, and I'd uh, just like to thank you. And I suppose the most important thing about games and making games is to have fun, because if it isn't fun, it isn't a game. Uh, so thanks very much. And um, it's been a pleasure. Thanks. <laughs>